Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Today we're going to dive once again into the world of game creation by learning how to make a simple yet very fun map system that you can use for any game you may be working on, whether it's 2D, 3D, a platformer, or a top-down adventure. By the end of the video, you should end up with something like this. The character can walk around your world while gazing at a map, the little red icon representing the player. As you can see, when the player reaches this flower, for example, that's also clearly indicated on the map, which he can happily use to find his way around the world. Of course, you'll be able to expand on this like crazy. I just made a very small world and as a result, map for the purpose of this tutorial. But you can have a great time building something huge and epic. Just before starting, a big thanks to Pebble and Wisp for their support on Patreon. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, I have a player character that can move in any direction with the arrow keys and this little environment set up. Each environment piece has a 2D collider so that my player can't just walk right through it. And obviously my player also has a 2D box collider as well as a 2D rigid body. Let's now make a map of this area. I'll drag and drop this paper sprite I made in Photoshop and call it Map. You'll see that I've also gone ahead and made a couple icons for this map, such as a tree, flower, house, and tower. These are just the map representations of what's actually in my game world. So obviously, if you have a volcano, you'll have to go ahead and make a volcano icon for your map. I'll start by drag and dropping into the scene view my red player icon and place it at the center of my map because in my case, the player starts positioned in the middle of the world. I'll now create an empty game object called map root, make sure it's nicely centered and drag and drop both my map and player icon inside that in the hierarchy. Okay, awesome. Let's now get this player icon moving in the same direction as our real player. We can do so by simply drag and dropping the player movement script I made on that icon and giving it a much lower speed than the real player. Note that this movement script is very straightforward. I have a tutorial showing you exactly how to make it and the link will be in the description. So since my player has a speed of 10, I'll just give my player icon on a speed of 1. I also need to add a 2D rigid body to it or the script won't work. And if I hit play, you'll see that when my player moves left, for example, so does my player icon. Same for up, diagonal, and so on. As you can see, I have this little house a little above and to the right of my player. So I'll drag and drop my house map icon, make sure to parent it to my map root empty game object, and place it the best I can above and to the right of my player icon on the map. I can now hit play and test. Basically, I'm just checking whether when my player reaches the house, my player icon also reaches the house icon on the map. If he doesn't, I'll just check whether the icon is placed a little too low, high, right or left, and change it accordingly. Of course, you don't need to be pinpoint accurate. If the player icon is roughly nearby, that's completely fine in my opinion anyway. I can then place a tower icon on my map, representing this tower right here. And again, it's just about testing and checking whether the map is accurate or not, and tweaking things if necessary. Of course, never change the actual world, to suit the map. Just focus on rearranging the map to fit the game world. Best thing to do is first create your whole world and place everything as I've done here, and then make your map representation. However, before going crazy and adding loads of little icons to your map, note that there's a major flaw right now. If you get stuck to a collider, for example, you just run non-stop into this house. The character isn't actually moving in the world because he's blocked by the house, but the player icon is still moving. To fix this, I'll create a little C-sharp script called player stuck, add it to my player character, and open it up. We basically want to check every 0.001 seconds whether the player is in the same position in the game world. If that's the case, then we'll make sure that the player icon stops moving. If not, that means the player is moving and isn't stuck by any collider. In which case, we want our player icon moving around the map. 
variable. So I'll make a private float variable called check time that I'll set equal to 0.001, as well as a private vector two variable called old pose. And in my update function, I'll check with an if statement whether check time is less or equal to zero. If it is, then I'll set old pose equal to my player's current transform.position and reset check time back equal to 0.001. If not, I'll slowly decrease check time using minus equals time dot delta time. Now all I need to do is check whether the distance between my position old of 0.001 seconds stored inside of this old pose vector2 variable and my current position is less than 0.1 for example. If that's the case then that either means my player isn't moving or he is but is stuck by some collider. In which case I'll grab a reference to my map icon up here and set its speed equal to 0 when that condition is met. However, if the distance is greater, then the map icon should still move around the map, so I'll make sure to set its speed equal to 1, or whatever other value you've set up in the inspector. Now, if things don't work properly in-game, just make sure to try out perhaps an even smaller value than 0.001 for check time. I'll now just drag and drop that player map icon in this empty slot in the inspector and hit play. And you'll see that when I just charge straight at the house, my map icon will stop moving. And that's it really. Now note that with the code we've just added, you may need to increase your player icon speed a little. And if you do so, make sure to also tweak the speed value here as well. But once that's done, you can have fun adding icons to your map representing your game world. Of course, you'll probably not want this map glued to the screen, so just add a little script called map to it. And inside that, make two transform variables, one called player pose, the other off-screen pose. When the player holds down the M key, for example, I'll get the map moving toward the player pose, which in my case will always be at the center of the screen. And if not, I'll get the map moving off-screen. Not forgetting, of course, to create a public float speed variable up here that we will set up in the inspector and that will dictate how fast or slow the map appears or disappears. So back in Unity, I'll make an empty game object called offscreen pose that I'll parent to my player and place above him. And I'll drag and drop that inside of that empty slot as well as my player and give the map a speed of say 100. I can now test this out and things should work smoothly. And there we go! Now of course this is not the only way to make a map for your game, but it's certainly very easy to code and gives you a lot of freedom to make your map look however you want. On the downside, placing manually all these little icons and testing things out can become tedious, especially if you're making a huge open world. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and found this a map making concept interesting and helpful. If you don't want to make the entire map visible at first, but only want parts explored to display on the map, you can easily do so by giving a little script to each map icon, checking whether the player icon is at a certain distance away, and if so, display themselves. I love that feeling of adventure and discovery, so having a map at first completely blank would feel great. I would be really excited to go explore this world and gradually fill up all that white space. With that said, thanks so much for watching. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be so appreciated, and if you could donate even but a dollar via Patreon to support me and my channel financially, that would be absolutely awesome. Okay, stay tuned, cheers! <laughs>